This project is meant to be somewhat an introduction to CorelDRAW X3's power trays, but also several of the tools we'll use to clean up a graphic that we have traced. So here's what we have a page size two and a half by one and a half. I have a scanned graphic, a simple star that was created with a, an inkjet printer, thin line, so the edges really aren't all that smooth. I'm going to select it and double check. I've got a monochrome bitmap on layer one. I'm going to zoom in on that a little so we can see it a little better. And then, not that it has anything to do with the the way it will trace, but I have that object selected, and I'm going to do away with the white box. Again, it has no effect on the trace. It'll just allow me to see a little better what we really have. So with that object selected, a bitmap selected, the property bar, among other things, shows the trace bitmap. Or I could right click and click on tra trace bitmap from here. Either way, I get this menu. So the first thing I'm going to do is try quick trace. And we'll see how quick trace does with this graphic. If it does a good job, no sense going any further because it is quick, as its name implies. I'm going to grab a hold of that and drag it off to the side. This is that which with which we started. This is what we wound up. We see at least one major problem here, and I see we have a group of four objects. Pay particular attention to that, and it'll save you a lot of aggravation. Four objects, that means one of them is the white box, so we can eliminate that easily, but that means there's three other parts, which means we would really like to have two parts, the inside of that star and the outside of the star. That means there's at least one more break in addition to this major defect we have in here. So I'm going to press my delete key to get rid of that. We'll go back and select our bitmap again and instead of quick trace we'll go to line art. While in line art notice it making a trip across here. It is scanning that at the settings that I currently have. Also I have this set for before and after so I can see this is our bitmap over here and this is what it views as a finished part over here. What we have now is a traced result with two curves in it, 712 nodes. Let's see if we could smooth that out a bit and maybe reduce those nodes. But we're watching very carefully. We don't want to lose any detail whatsoever as we go across there. Notice by smoothing that up to 51, we dropped our nodes uh, by about a fourth, or a third anyway. Uh, 158 nodes. Let's go just a little more. Again, paying particular attention to our area in here to be sure that we don't lose any detail. Down to 156. That didn't make much difference. I'm just going to accept it. At, uh, but before I do, if we tell it to delete the original, then that means we're pretty satisfied with it. It'll throw away the old part, leaving throw away the bitmap leaving only the finished trace. I'm not going to do that because we may want to work on it again. But I do would like to remove the background. So I'm clicking on remove background. Sometimes, this is a very simple graphic. Sometimes it wouldn't be that easy. Sometimes we might want to specify the color. Go to our eyedropper and tell it that this is the color I, we'd really like to throw away. And then let's tell it to remove that from the entire image, although in this case it did anyway. So now we're down to 76 nodes. I don't notice any loss in detail, so I'm going to tell it OK. Now we're back in Corel Draw, and when it comes back in, it'll always be on top of our other of our bitmap. Notice we have a group of one object 
that spells a little bit of trouble. What we really wanted was two. We could go back and try to re reset some of the parameters to get that to where it came out with two. But from my experience, I don't think uh, that, that looks like a very good trace where it is. So I'm afraid we'd lose uh, some of our corner roundness if we went back and tried to eliminate the one problem we do have. So let's work with it the way it is. I'm going to go to view wireframe so we can see a little closer truly to what we have. And then I'm going to zoom up on a portion of that. There we see the inside and the outside. We see no problems there. I'm going to go to the navigator in the lower right hand corner and step around here see if I can find our problem because there must be a break in there somewhere. Ah, looks like here it is. We'll zoom up on that area. Sure enough, there's our problem. We know there's only one problem like this, else there would be a group of, of some number of objects more than this. So I'm going to go to my Shape tool. Oh, my mistake. We never did ungroup it. So I'm going to select our object and ungroup it. We can't modify it while it's still grouped. So now we have a single curve on layer 1. We'll go to our Shape tool, grab one of these nodes and extend it over the top in this area. Then we should be able to weld those, eliminating that break in between. So we'll go to Arrange, Shaping, and Weld. Ah, that worked. Now we have one curve on layer 1. While we're zoomed up on it, let's go to Arrange and Break Curve Apart, or Control k Now we have two objects, which is what we hoped we would have when we first started. I'm going to select the inner portion and delete that. Then we'll zoom back out on that which is selected. And there's our star. Now I could go to my shape tool and eliminate some of these nodes in between. As a matter of fact, by default, this will show rectangles. So I could take the rectangle and delete these nodes out. Take my rectangle, delete these out. But let's just illustrate what very few Corel users take advantage of is this freehand selection tool. Then with one foul swoop I should be able to take out most of those nodes that I really don't want. My objective here is to leave only one node at each corner. That will not actually be completely possible, but that's, that's what we'd like to try to do. So the freehand allows me to sweep back in and out. Then pressing the delete key once eliminates almost all of those errant nodes. Really doesn't look very good now, but uh, don't be too alarmed. I'm going to double click on the shape tool that should select all the nodes and we'll be sure all of those are lines instead of curves. Ah, already that looks quite a bit better. In X3, Corel has tried to show us when we have nodes on top of each other. That's what this little handle, it looks like a handle here, it's really a pointer to, to a node that's down below that other node. So I'm going to uh, I had them all selected. My fault. I'm going to undo that. We'll click off. Then I'm going to get rid of a few of these nodes. I'm going to undo that one more time because I failed to check and see how many nodes I have. I have 12 nodes and a, a star should have 10 if I'm thinking right. So we have two extra nodes in here. Let's get rid of that one and that one. And now we're down to 10 nodes. Can't, no sense looking for any more. So I'm going to dress that star up just a little more 
by selecting these and then we'll align those. We'll turn off vertical, meaning we want them aligned horizontally. Maybe we'll select uh, these two and tell it with those with aligned vertical. So we'll click off horizontal. Now those are perfectly on top of each other. As a matter of fact, really now the rectangular tool would be an easier way to select those. We want those aligned horizontally. So we'll turn off vertical. Now that's perfect. And when we get down to the bottom, looks pretty good. But these also would be, we'd have a real nice graphic here by aligning those. So we'll align those horizontally. And there we wound up with pretty nice star. We'll zoom back out on our entire page view it back in Enhanced. Maybe we'll put a red outline on this, clicking the right mouse button for the Outline tool. No Fill. Go to our Pick tool. And so we have a pretty high quality graphic there. Certainly we all understand there was many ways we could have made a star much faster than this, especially in Corel 12 or 13. But I like to use a graphic like a star because everyone understands immediately where we're trying to go with this. So I think that's a great introduction to show to give you get you started on Corel Power Trace.